No, I've, I very rarely speak to John. John, let's <laughs> uh, get me on mic this time. John's, John's a good old Brit from the 1950s. But he, it, uh, it turns he, out he, that John is actually yeah. illegitimate and he was specially born in 1938. Did you know that? Uh, so he's adopted. Well, let's put it this way. His father wasn't too happy when, there's, when his mother came home. Oh, I, I see, I see. Well, John thinks I'm a bullshit artist, so... Uh, no, I really? Yeah. Well, let's just get things... Don't know what we're supposed to do to convince him. But I'm interested in, his, in this fighting style that John's got. I think he went, he when he dismissed the head of the SAS and sent him packing... But he won't teach his uh, style to anybody. He's keeping it under wraps, I think. Well, I think he'll teach it for a substantial sum and a big smile. But yeah. just once... Well, James. James or Michael? What is it? Michael. Okay, Michael. Welcome to Basis 23. Well, um, well, Michael, uh, uh, coming from Belfast, I can put on a really good British accent. <laughs> because I'm, I'm more British than you are these days. And uh, you being a, a U.S. American citizen, don't know what Brits do these days. You know, driving on the wrong side of the road, fish fingers, mash <laughs> peas and all that sort of stuff. You've probably forgot all that. Mushy peas, not mash peas. Yes, I, I miss the old mushy peas. Yeah, I mean, that's Sebastian of civilization. So, I mean, all joking aside, what, apart from your lovely wife, which is a wonderful thing, you know, once you're a dad, the big boys have to sort of put their toys away and actually start being Mr. Responsible. That's what people keep telling me, because I don't have any kids. But you have one. Great. God bless. So the point Thank is, you, tell us the whole story that brought you to America the day before you were dis you would be qualified or disqualified from joining the U.S. military. What's the story behind that? You've got lots to tell us, so let's let's hear it. Okay, let's get it on the road. Um, so I, I've been basically stationed at um, the largest military base in the country since July. And uh, that is a place called Joint Base San Antonio. And San Antonio is in Texas. That's where I'm living at the moment, in San right. Antonio. So... Um, it's the, obviously, yeah, like I say, it's the biggest above ground base in the country. And oh, I love that. Three, the biggest above ground base. Yeah. Yeah. The one. So, but it consists of three bases. You've got um, Fort Sam, and then um, you have Lackland Air Force Base, and, um, and then oh, I'm forgetting the Randolph Air Force Base. Yeah. That's the third. And um, the National Security Agency is based in three places in America. Three secret places because the National Security Agency doesn't technically exist, so... Uh, well, you know what I mean. No such agency. I mean, they have a website. Um, and they say they actually advertise for jobs on the website. You can get, like, NSA uh, police officer jobs, like guarding Fort Meade, things like that. Yeah. But they're usually for people with prior military experience for those jobs. You know, like G4? Like, what, the private security firm? Yeah, yeah very, very similar. Prime, anyway, okay, right. I'm being a little bit jovial because I realize this is a very serious sub subject. You got into okay. the military. What's, what's, what brought you there? What brought you to the U.S. military? Um, that is a long story. Well, tell us. <sighs> well... What I'm interested in, very simply, is why, uh, for, instance, for instance, as a British citizen, that you couldn't be in there, for instance, as a British attaché, some kind of involvement with British military, as opposed to having to be a US military person. Is there a reason for that? I had to be in the US military for the operations that I was involved in. And um, I, was, I wasn't working as a US military soldier. I was working as, I suppose let's call it a fourth Reich soldier to advance that agenda. 
A what? To advance the Fourth Reich agenda. Okay. So explain that. Well, um, it's to bring in our policies, what we want the direction of America to head. I mean, so America I, would be a small part of the Fourth Reich. There was a very important part, and um, they have the muscle and the and the resources. So we're needed to. Um, I was involved in certain operations where we need to bring in agendas of gun control, and uh, and that's what Anya was very concerned about. The the one thing your last night uh, operations. A photograph that you sent where you've got you know the gun pointing straight at you referring to the Sandy Ford alleged false flag event to get rid of guns in the United States uh, I mean I'd rather not get into all that until I have the full details I'd rather just talk for the moment about what was going on on the base earlier when I first got there in July okay well Michael let's let's speak Let's just talk. So um, I got there in July, and like I say, it's uh, the biggest base in the whole country. Uh, it consists of, like I say, Lapland Air Force Base, Fort Sam and Randolph Air Force Base. Now, the National Security Agency is based in three places in America, and that is down here in the city of San Antonio in Texas, um, the headquarters of Fort Meade in Maryland, and also Denver. Now, um, at the, they're based on Lapland Air Force Base, at Joint Base San Antonio. And they have a um, section there called the Medina Annex, which is the NSA building on the base. Um, there's an entrance there underground to the underground sh shuttle system. There's also entrances, there's entrances all over San Antonio and all over the base, the joint base. Um, it's got a huge underground base below it. Now, um, it's there's what's, also what's um, the purpose of having it underground apart from a nuclear strike? Is there any other reason why it's underground like that? Well, it's interesting you mention about the nuclear strike because um, in 2011 there was a Russian intelligence report um, leaked onto the internet. And um, it was actually by Saoirse Fow. And um, the information was that uh, where we live in San Antonio, it's called Bexar County, that's the name of the county. And uh, here in San Antonio, you've got uh, Bexar County Courthouse. And that's, um, that's very nearby. That's actually an entrance to the underground shuttle system, the courthouse there. And um, this Russian intelligence report stated that 2011, five CIA agents came up um, topside from the underground shuttle through Bexar County Courthouse entrance. And when they were, uh, when they came out of the courthouse, they were arrested by police and local FBI agents. Is that uh, because they literally didn't have the right pass or they were considered as insurgents of some kind? They were considered, um, the, there were suspicions they were about to carry out some terrorist act. I'm not sure what it was, but I knew it was a terrorist act, so they were arrested. I mean, I'm suggesting that surely the CIA would have had relevant passes, so they would have not have failed at their mission. Or relevant intelligence, relevant liaison. I'm not sure exactly what the mission was. But my point is um, telling this information because it's just a big nest here in San Antonio. It's a big NSA CIA nest. A and, nest uh, is something which we would refer to normally as a non-human or an alien nest. That well, kind of phrase. Definitely, it's um, non-humans and aliens. You've got, and it's just. What's the like, difference between a non-human and an alien? So, um, in in order, so it, because we may be familiar with certain phrases and terms certain people watching this won't be so what i'll do sometimes is ask you to explain a phrase so that people understand what you're then saying afterwards 
if that, well, if that works. I think there's reptilians down there, and they're from other planets, obviously, and they're down there on the bases and underneath. And um, there's definitely big cyborg projects going around. They've got Bam C, the huge medical hospital on Fort Sam. It was just near my barracks where I used to live. And we always used to have to take trips to Bam C. And it stands for Brooks Army Medical Center. It's a huge hospital on Fort Sam. We go in there in the days, and there'd be so many young soldiers, like in their 20s, um, um, in wheelchairs with m missing legs because that's where they sent them from Iraq and Afghanistan. If they lose legs, they send them to Bam C on Fort Sam. And, um, and then they kind of reintegrate them into uh, society from there. You know? And um, there's, they're doing, there's definitely a lot of cyborg involvement. They're doing... Um, it, 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 would be a useful, it would be a useful place to mix classified and declassified technologies in plain sight? Well, DARPA's involved, and they're um, very heavily involved on this particular base it, it, with our cyborg limbs. So I think they're getting a lot of these soldiers that have lost limbs and they're experimenting with attaching limbs and see how, they, you know, how they're reacting. So these, these projects are all very closely linked together in this particular place. And is, is there a, what kind of limbs are we talking about? Are we talking about bioengineered limbs? Yeah. I mean, yes. we're seeing a demonstration of this with the Olympics, where soldiers are able to, uh, or people who've lost limbs, the Paralympics are able to out, outrun humans. Yeah, and that's the very, um, that's not sophisticated. We're talking really advanced stuff here. We're talking where they, they're um, building plasma cannons inside the forearms of the robotic arms. So they're being able to unleash uh, laser weaponry out their hands with, with devastating... Literally force. just like, bingo. It's out, it's out, it, comes out, it pops out the middle knuckle. It's, um, it's actually some kind of chew built into the forearm. It's a very small weapon. It pops out the center knuckle, a tiny barrel, and then the laser shot. This one? Yeah, the middle knuckle, just uh, here. Right, okay. Let's pop out there, and then um, if that laser beam touches you, it, just, it will set your whole head on fire. Where do they get the power to derive such energy for such a weapon? I think they're using Vril energy, some kind of... Um, they the can't. German Vril? German Vril. I think it's some kind of blue energy, blue colored energy, and they've, they've somehow harnessed it into batteries and very small minis, uh, miniature batteries. And I think that the, the cyborg limbs have got these batteries in them. And I think they're powering up these, uh, this weaponry built into the arms, too. What kind of technology is involved with that? Are we borrowing it? Borrowing it? Uh, what's that, Miles? Are we uh, borrowing that? Is it human-derived? Because, I mean, humans are pretty ingenious. I think... Um, there's... There's an underground um, entrance to uh, Bam C, the medical hospital of Fort Sam. And, like I say, there's one in the Bexar County Courthouse. They're scattered all over the place. Now, that... They're taking soldiers underground on the underground train. They're heading them straight up north to Dallas, to the Bush family ranch. Um, it's actually, that's a terminal underneath the ranch. Because the Bush... George okay, let, let's discuss this underground tunnel network. I, I was, uh, John, John Lear let me know uh, recently that there was a major network within the UK, of which there was a hub under Manchester. Uh, that then goes due west through Wales and Ireland and connects up with uh, the States. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I think it's definitely international. What, what, what kind of technology? I mean, to sit in a train, trundling along in a, in a tube train, in, a, in even, even, a, even a, a, an underground train that goes to France, that's doing 100-odd miles an hour. 
still takes 20 minutes. That's a heck of a long ride. I think it's maglev technology where it's um, they're using electromagnetics, so it's going extremely fast. So how do you how do you decelerate without ending up a bit ill? Um, you don't feel motion in there when you go in. Um, the shutters come down, so you don't get sick. Because if the shutters are up, you see the walls flying past so quickly, you start to feel nauseous. So they make sure they have the shutters down. You don't actually feel much motion when you're inside it. So it doesn't feel as if you're really moving at all? Really, no. And then it takes, it's about 20 minutes to Dallas from San Antonio underground. And yeah, it's always been amazed that people don't use maglev uh, railways uh, in science, but obviously they're using it in secret. I think, yeah, um, the, so they head up north, the soldiers, to the terminal under, in Dallas. Underneath the do, these, do these tunnels connect with any of the old system used by the, our, our ancestors? I think there's deeper tunnels below that are connected. And what kind of people are these guys? It's, you get down there and it gets very... There's like two layers of the government underground. The, the first layer is like... The Zionist um, kind of government, and that's on the first couple of layers you normally see, and that's not so high tech. It's just guys who, like Delta Force security guards, and um, like in black uniforms. But there's, there's no, you don't see any SS, any Fourth Reich or anything like that down there, and it's very all the the technology in the corridors and that are kind of run down. It's like typical kind of Jewish um, spending policies where they, they never spend any money on anything. It's like the, because the, it's the Zionist uh, kind of government. But it go, worked yesterday, so it'll work tomorrow. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And the US Army is a kind of communist Jewish uh, the outsiders. That, but they treat the soldiers like crap and don't feed them, and it's just they. Don't spend any money on anything. They feed them nasty food, terrible conditions. But anyway, so you go deeper. Uh, what do you mean by deeper? Are you talking uh, 100 um, miles well, or what? You go deeper down the levels, and it becomes then you're getting into the real kind of government. This is the fourth right government. Everything's a lot more expensive looking. Everything's um, more high tech. And then you'll start bumping into the the Fourth Reich soldiers there with like with the much more stylish and expensive uniforms. Oh well, they have to have a certain amount of style. I mean, the one thing about the Nazis is they did have good style. Well, yeah, they did. And um, yeah, but their motor cars aren't necessarily that much better. <laughs> so, so what what are they doing down there? I mean, I understand that if you're if you go too deep, women can't procreate. They're they're their biorhythms don't work. How do they deal with that kind of problem? Well, the Nazis down there, they have um, the, the, the policy of um, polygamy. Most of the guys down there have like four or five wives. Yeah, but you've got to have wives which will reproduce. Their biorhythms don't work properly. How do they deal with that issue? As far as I know, they're able to reproduce. I'm not sure. I mean, we're not. We're maybe talking only a mile down or something. Oh, here. right. Okay. Yeah. It took like a mile down. Which is, so, for um, the average mine, isn't a huge distance down. But it goes a lot deeper than that. Have you been down there? Have you got any data on how deep those places go? Um, I just remember going down the, on the, the first levels with the, with the train, underground train, just going on there. And um, there's definitely connections with the Bush family, the ranch, spending time there. I remember being, having meetings there with um, Donald Rumsfeld was there, George Bush Jr. was there, and um, George Bush Jr. was call, calls me he, the uh, our British friend, and um, Donald Rumsfeld doesn't like me very much. Is that because you can speak better than he does? You can string more than two words together? Probably. Probably. And, I mean... Or does he just not like limeys? He just doesn't like the fact that 
some people are saying certain things about me that would, could be a threat to them. Okay, what are people saying about you? Because uh, people don't believe you've actually joined the army. Uh, they think some of the shots are staged. You know, the, the, all this all this kind of stuff's going to be, you know, coming up. H how do you how do you deal with that? H how do you? Uh, well, I, it's ridiculous. I mean, of course, I they're real pictures. I mean, I've got video footage I can send you and. Um, You've got DVDs from the training I can send you. Yeah. So I want you to have a look at one particular part of the footage from my training. There's, some, there's something going on there, some anomalies. So, so I think let's get back to the, to the beginning. I mean, I saw you uh, in, in a little uh, quiet uh, seaside resort with a sandy beach. And then about a year later, you're going to the States and you're all beefed up. You've eaten too many McDonald's hamburgers with those <laughs> funny chemical buns. And you're going to be a goddamn Yankee, for God's sake. So wh wh what, what, what's the story to get you there and what happened when you got there? Before, before I joined the Army, about six months before, I was told by, from a friend in the CIA that they've reactivated the IBIS program and they're trying to seed um, foreign... Um, citizens into foreign militaries. This is what I was told. And I hadn't even decided to join the US Army then. That's a big uh, decision. Well, they were saying they were trying to seed IBIS operatives into foreign militaries to yeah. push forward the Fourth Reich agenda. Now, it turns out that the 42 children in IBIS um, was named after... Thoth, we talked about this before. Ibis named after Thoth, the Egyptian deity. Now, that if you study Satanism, Thoth is a high-ranking demon in the uh, satanic hierarchy of demons. Now, now, demons is a is an emotive word. What really are these beings? What, what, what I, where do I, they come from? What's I their actual that, existence? I think we're just talking about extraterrestrials here, reptilian extraterrestrials, or dimensionals. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really understand all that stuff. Dimensions. I'm physic. I'm about what's physically happening in this dimension. But yeah, definitely extraterrestrials, um, reptilian. Now, they would say um, Thoth. It was the Ibis program was based. The name came from Thoth. Now they're saying that the 42 children they tracked. It was for the Illuminati religion. They believe that one, one of the children is the um, physical embodiment of Lucifer on the earth. Now, th this is a, this, the, these pictures which uh, an Amash member came up with uh, looked a little bit like you. Now, Anya says they're not like you. Are they like you? Are they part, what's the story about those... Uh, he comes from the same batch. Now, what was interesting is, about two days before I saw Basis 21 with the whole um, David Rockefeller's son in it, I said to Haley that I was convinced that David Rockefeller's son was a clone of me before I even saw the Basis 21. And when I saw the Basis 21, I thought, other people are starting to recognize this now. Um, but is I, it correct? I mean, you got two, you can have two brothers. They could look similar. Two brothers can look completely different. Okay, well, I'll talk about an important photograph. Because there, there's one is, one is quite a slim guy. Yeah. Another's got a lot of beard, and he's, you know, maybe you don't know, we don't know the ages or the times when they're, they're taken. Yeah. Uh, he's the same age as me, David Rockefeller's son. He's 35. And um, what is very interesting is there was a photograph being passed around the intelligence community in America. And my friend in the CIA was um, asked to come up to Virginia, to Langley, for a meeting. And when he got up to Virginia, he was shown a, pit, a photograph taken, I think it was the um, mid-80s. It was taken in British Columbia in Canada, near Nelson. It showed uh, Berezinski. 
um, there with me, my friend, and about 10 other children, all boys that looked like brothers. Um, he was shown that picture. And like I say, it was Berezinski, high-level majestic operative, and a very, very obviously a famous politician. He's there, standing there, and the, the, um, the evergreen trees are all in the background, and we're sitting, it's like a picnic table. Like I said, Berezinski, I'm in the picture, my friend from the CIA in the picture, and there's 10 other boys that look similar. I think David Rockefeller's son is um, in the picture. He's one of the batch, and um, the allu there's a book about him online written, written by Wes Penray, and they're saying that the Illuminati believe he is the incarnation of Lucifer or Satan. Okay, that's a belief system. Is there any fact about this? I mean, are they are they in, um, are they implying something to well, something which is like Rosemary's book, Baby or what? In the book now, um, from about the Rockefeller's son, there's, um, they, there's a document there that um, suggests that his company has uh, put one trillion dollars into um, black projects. And now this guy is not to be underestimated. He's um, West Premier says he's a cyborg with superhuman strength, and they, people have seen him in the gym demonstrating superhuman strength. He said people have seen him drink a whole bottle of vodka, and not even get drunk. Well, uh, I mean, the, the old Russian a, can do that, no problem. On a, he has a private army working for him, all ex um, like Air Force intelligence, Navy people, and the Illuminati are saying, according to this, but that he is um, Lucifer. You know the. The, an incarnation of him, and Satan. What What's the purpose of that? Take the planet over, wipe the rest of us out, enslave us, or what? Um, I think it's definitely population reduction. In hand. I hear an awful uh, lot about population reduction, but uh, to a lot of countries, population's increasing, according to statistics. I mean, there's... Well, are we talking population reduction within two generations? I just think the stage has been set for a nuclear strike on America, but I don't want to make predictions. I don't believe that nuclear weapons actually function too well to do that. There would be a, would there be another way of doing it? There's plenty of ways to do it. Um, why America? Why why should the Fourth Reich attack America when it's its main resource? Because of what it's become. It's become a racial melting pot. But they've done that. They haven't they done that to poison the races? Isn't that their function to well, to, to undermine the races so the elite will then survive? Well, there's two elites. You asked in bases nine who's the bad guys, who's the good guys. There's two factions. You've got the Zionist Jews versus the Fourth Reich Nazis. The same as when it goes back to the Russian Revolution and before that, when the Jewish Bolsheviks killed over 10 million white Aryan Russians. Then, then in the World War II, the Germans turned around and killed a lot of Jews. And obviously there's a lot of controversy about the Holocaust and how many was that number, but they did definitely get uh, killed. Yeah, I think there's a few basic mechanical production line issues with that. I think that's a, that, that's, that's a... That's so, a physical. I mean, I mean, just it, it carried on after that. It was just going back and forth the war, and then. Well, just just thinking, just interrupting there. Uh, your good close friend Barry King's father was meant to be involved with finding something very important in one of those uh, research camps about strange humans and a strange aircraft. I mean the uh, the Nazi the Fourth Reich is. Um, it takes a lot of its power from artifacts where they can power up a soldier. They can connect one soldier up with an artifact or several artifacts and make that one individual powerful enough to um, neutralize an army of what kind of artifacts? soldiers. What kind of artifacts are we talking about? But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what, what, what Barry, and let's face it, Barry King started this whole 
story. Uh, what about his father finding German scientists or a lab with German scientists working with some kind of strange humans for the purposes of interfacing some kind of technology with certain racial characteristics of people from the concentration camps? What about that? Well, I mean, the whole thing is um, race related. There's a, it's there's about to be a race war here in America. Okay, race, okay, race related. But what are the key factors in certain races which are important and which are not important? I mean, Zionist, well, Aryan, whatever. The um, the Jewish Zionist um, agenda was very much to because America was always a white country, it was very much to bring Africans in. So and, the slave, uh, the slave, the so-called slave trade was designed to do that? Yeah, well, they wanted to bring them in. And then, um, then in turn, the, the Jew wanted to give the black in America um, prestige in like the areas of sports and entertainment. Yeah. And that was purposely and socially engineered so the black could get prestige and um, interbreed with white women. And the the plan was to submerge white blood um, and by mixing the races. Well, this is interesting because this shares what your close friend and appreciative colleague John Urban is saying that there is an it's basically a, a, a this is designed to destroy the so-called white race, the so-called white races. Um, yeah, I mean. They were because the the Nazis believed that um, they descended from Atlantean white supermen, and they believed that they'd lost their powers, certain abilities. And that's by, that's called Ireland or Ireland, because Ireland uh, that's that's the suppression of of the knowledge base. Michael Tazarian, people like that would talk about origins of civilization based on Ireland, which is Aryans. Which isn't race specific. It's just those who are who have the wise and higher knowledge. Um, yeah, definitely. And they wanted to. Um, the Nazis believed that they devolved they, uh, through dark races mixing with their Atlantean blood. So they were attempting to purify themselves again to get back to the original state, the the, the Nazi God Man. So the plan, is, the Jewish Zionist plan, was to mix, bring in blacks to America so they could interbreed with white women to submerge that, that real power in the blood so it couldn't come out. Now, are we talking, there's a difference here between Jews and Zions, Zionists. Are we talking, are there, is there a difference there? I mean, this is very emotive stuff that we're talking about here. So I want to make things absolutely clear so that we're talking on a practical level as opposed to any kind of a race bias level. It's um, definitely a Jewish elite. Um, I mean, they've laid it out in the Protocols of Zion that they, they want to exterminate the, right, the white race. It's the Jewish... Are they not white themselves? Um, what do you some, determine some, a so-called white race? Okay, some of them look very white. When I, was, um, when I went to Sotheby's in New York and I met the Duke of Marlborough there, um, you can use that picture for the... I just that, find it was so in, so close to Peasmore, Duke of Marlborough, Peasmore, and crop circles. There was a load of things that sort of operated there that was a little bit coincidental. Yeah, and um, these people are kind of bringing me in so they can meet me, so they can kind of feel me out and things. Why you? Because they're trying to work out who in the 42 is this person and they want to I mean you've identified the person the, the, who is the person the so called well, person some factions say it's David Rockefeller's son and you're saying uh, that would be the person who would contain Lucifer well there's other factions that believe it's not him now there, it's the, um, the it's the belief systems of the Fourth Reich and the Illuminati. Ultimately, they believe 
Jesus, Lucifer and Thor from the Odinist religion are the same person. And they believe one person out of that 42 is going to carry, is going to embody, is going to be that person. Why do we need one bloke to save the planet? Why do we need one guy? Oh, they want the the Illuminati need a leader. It's always been run by one man. So the Illuminati, in essence, are useless without a leader. They don't have independent thought. They don't have any ability to think for themselves. Uh, It's he he makes the decisions, and everybody else just carries it out. He can by. It it's not sense. a very superior race if, if they can't think for themselves, come up with yeah, creative they, they thought. They don't need to think for themselves because they believe the leader is a god. and um, So they're subservient make, to that. Yeah, they're subservient to it. And they, he can make seven phone calls and have a million individuals go into action within 24 hours. It's always been led by one person. The eye at the top of the pyramid means one man and you're saying that or some people are saying that that picture that guy uh, rockefeller which is, looks like you is that guy it's some some people in the illuminati are saying it's him other people are saying it's not him there's um two there's two kind of bloodlines it um in the fact there's two factions in the Illuminati, four Reich and the Zionist Jews. There's two bloodlines at play. You've got the kind of the bloodline that believes they descend from King David, and it's the Jesus bloodline. We've heard so much about this. Then you've got the other side who believe that they descend from Odin, and they're the um, now, Odin. That's that's a different the line. German- the Nordics. Uh, it's a different bloodline. It's a Germanic bloodline now. There's a very interesting documentary by a Professor Sinclair on YouTube. It's called um, God Kings. Now, okay. he's, he's identified the two bloodlines, the Jewish Zionist, the Jesus bloodline, and the Germanic Odin bloodline. And he says he has lists of them. Now, he says that they've interbred together, those two bloodlines, to form one uh, Form one and it's because they have a symbol. What? What? Okay. What's the symbol and what's the significance of that bloodline? I mean, we hear all this about bloodlines. Bloodline is the the two have joined together. They've been warring for for a, a long time, and they've um, what? The... T- they've taken like a prince and a princess from each different families and married them off together to create a new bloodline. That's like any good old family betrothal. What's what's the dowry to this wedding, this unity? The, uh, it's a new bloodline, which is, the symbol is a um, swastika inside a Star of David. They fit together perfectly geometrically. And it's the symbol of the Raelian movement. They have that symbol. They use that particular symbol. Yeah, I mean, I'm they- using very, very simple terminology because other people who don't understand this kind of thing, I have to try and equate that. So for, for, they're a very religious style movement, the Raelians. Um, it's, they were involved in cloning. Um, they yeah, they, they, they claim to have done the first alleged first clone, clone. I mean, clone, um, Eve back in the, um, the Bahamas, it was. There's a lot of cloning goes down. Was that successful? Yeah, it was successful. There was a lot of um, a lot of cloning goes down, uh, goes on down in the Bahamas. Now, now what, what, one of the problems about cloning is you might be able to have a biological entity, but what about the spiritual entity that enters it? Is it human? I think the each time you clone somebody, that you lose quality because it's not derived from the original pattern the universe created. Is that right? You've only got like three goes of it. Ch- I'm not an expert in this, but I think it's like chopping a photograph up and then um, you expand the little pieces, but it's lost quality from the picture. Yeah. So I think a very important part of Project Ibis was they, they didn't do cloning because um, they kept the original body. They tried to life extend the original body. Now, what, what is this life extension technology? I mean, is it something that keeps the Queen Mother going or, or Yeltsin or whatever? It keeps a lot of people going. Um, 
you, for instance, if you get your arm blown off in war, I mean, they're not, instead of just cloning a whole new body, they'll reattach a new arm. Because if they want it, if they, if they want to clone you, they wouldn't bother reattaching a new arm, they just grow a whole new body. So they stay away from cloning because of the life extension side of things. Now, that's, this leads on to damage to the body. You've, you claim to have an awful lot of enhancements. What are these enhancements and why do you need them? I think... Um, there's I'm, a refer special I'm referring to the photograph that Anya says is a medical team, part of your division, which is involved with some kind of time travel. Do you want to t talk about that, lead up to that? I think um, they, were, they were after, the NSA were after a certain type of metal to incorporate into the body, a very um, resilient metal. Now, um, there's definitely connections with the Odin, the Odin bloodline here. Now, um, he, in, in legends, in Norse legends, Odin's uh, had a weapon which was a spear. Yeah. And it, was, it was called Gunganir, his spear. And um, he was crucified on a tree, and the spear was put through his side. This is this is the old this is the origins to the so-called Jesus story of crucifixion. Exactly. And it was here that um, Odin just, um, came up with the rune symbols when he was crucified on the tree, and the spear was put through his side, according to Norse legend. Now um, they create they're creating the exoskeleton out of a. a specific type of metal and it's cold the, the process is cold fusion they found this metal on one of the moons of Saturn now the thing about this is is this is this referring to a metallic exoskeleton or a fiber exoskeleton I'm referring to uh, a fiber that seems to be virtually indestructible which is of alien origin allegedly the uh, skeleton itself is metal is alloy yeah is that a bits. flexible kind of metal to allow you to move? It's like um, yeah, I mean, it's flexible. The joints aren't made of it. The joints aren't. It's only the actual bones themselves are made of this particular metal. Do you, does it have a name or a number or a uh, category? I've heard it be called pre-metal, P-R-I. And it, it comes from one of the ice moons of Saturn. Um, I think you pronounce it Enfiladus. Right. And now uh, that, that's obviously been obtained by a, a, a space sort of uh, mining operation, which is either human or... They sent super soldiers to the moon to recover uh, the metal. How they did they know the metal was there to start with? That's a good question. They I mean, are we talking Gary McKinnon non-terrestrial officers here or what? They've been looking for it all over the place. And they found it. No, but how uh, did they know it was existed? I mean, if you uh, Saturn's a bit of a distance away. What kind of craft were they using? What kind of? How did they get there? And then they're using jump gates, descending craft. They sent super soldiers in onto the moon to look for the metal, and there was some kind of um, all creatures there, like wolves and all sorts of things there. Like what? Like kind of like werewolf beings in the ice and they had to like battle through these creatures to I get mean, yeah, I mean this is one of the fundamental reasons why do you need a super soldier I mean a decent fit army has obviously demonstrated you can beat the beat the hell out of a, another human army you know the United States military has got the most fantastic weapon systems around mm. okay sniper fire and 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 small wall you know, Small, small arms fire and hand-to-hand -hand combat is always a difficulty for any kind of a military organization because it's the geography and the physical battleground you're dealing with. So what's the basic logic to having super soldiers? Okay, put it this way. The soldiers that are going there, connecting up with, art have got artifacts on them that are activating them, like the spear, like Odin's spear and other artifacts. These guys are able to levitate, fly through the air, they're able to um, project these um, particle beam weapons out of their hands. They're able to project um, intense heat out of their eyes. 
You're All talking right. about essentially a non-fiction version of the so-called X-Men, like in the movies. Exactly, exactly. They're able to generate um, force fields around their bodies. They're able to teleport. Um, you mean like Jim Mars? I'm not familiar with. Oh, with he, that. he made a wee mistake one day operating a little silver thing and was gone within a second. Oh, okay. Um, I think this is slightly different because He's, they've got uh, you know, but uh, but the thing it, the the thing about this is why weaponize? What are these guys actually trying to fight? Well, what's the purpose of this? Well, apart from looking good on a, on a movie, that mission was to um, get the spear or get the metal that the spear was. What made was the from. name of the mission, and when did it happen? I think there was time travel involved. Now, how is time travel involved? Uh, do you, what sort of what happens to you I mean uh, the understanding is that it degrades the human bioframe um, not when you've got okay if you the answer to that is they take you on the underground train from Fort Sam you go to Dallas and from Dallas you head west to um, Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico now you go when you arrive there you get you go to Sandia National Laboratories. Now this is where they house the jump gates, the time travel technology. Okay, it sounds groovy, but is I mean I'm an engineer, I'd like to know more about how that kind of stuff works. Well I'm not a scientist, but it, they put you in a room, there's obviously you've got four walls, there's four screens. And then they project a video, they take a video of wherever it is from whatever time time frame, they project the um, image onto the video screen on all four walls, so you're surrounded by the environment in 360 degrees. And somehow they make the um, video footage of it real, and you walk through into the environment. So it's some form of projected light Instead, they use a projection, a projection screen to do it, and they make it real somehow, solid. I mean, we've had a recent death here, uh, the MASH project, where uh, one of the daughters of one of the witnesses was fighting the evil of the Illuminati, but she was saying before she died that the Illuminati were using her mind for a time travel purpose. It's the use of if you believe it, do you become it? Is that what you're saying? I think that they sometimes use psychics to open up the gates. I mean, how, how, how are these it, gates I mean, run? I've, tra I've traveled through gates before. Now, what do these like, things look like? I mean... The gates are like Egyptian, um, big Egyptian artifacts, like big stone circles with um, is, there, is there any imagery that you could send which would indicate what these things have a look like i mean are we talking stargate like in like in the tv yeah, series like stargate yeah with symbols on the side now i mean are these circular things yeah, two big circular. columns yeah no it's just circular i mean for yeah. instance in, in the old. in the tv series uh fringe they use two vertical pillars uh, there's been uh, on on American television last year. There was a a, a, a guy who's who was staying in during the war. His father took him to a jump gate in New York, and he ended up in the middle of the state somewhere on a Saturday morning. And it was two things beside two two sort of columns. Anything it's, like that? Uh, no, these are these are round. They look old. They're ancient. These are round. Uh, they look like made of some kind of stone, like black stone. I mean, are you saying that Richard Dean Anderson has got inside knowledge? Well, they have psychics sometimes sit in front of the gates in chairs, and they have the psychics open up the gates. Not always, though. Is that, is that so that whatever's on the other side is safe? They sometimes have psychics bring in beings through the gates with, and not just send soldiers uh, through them. They have beings come back, and the psychics open up the gates. But the room was nothing like that. It's completely different technology. This is like a jump room at Sandia Labs. Like I say, they just use um, video footage and somehow make it real. 
But where do they get the video footage from? Um, Have, I think it's connected with satellite technology. Now, but a satellite around Earth, how do you get that imagery of another world, another time? How do you get there to start with? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, just like everything else, you've got to get a, you, you get across a rope, across a, a across a fjord, you know. But somebody's got to get the damn rope across there to start with. Yeah. Well, I know that there's three sets of DARPA scientists, and um, there's three separate DARPA teams. There's one in France in 1812, and there's another. The second team of DARPA scientists are here in 2013. And um, the third set is, they're in 2212, I think. And they're communicating back and forth with each other. They're passing technology back and forth with the three time um, locations. And what are they, do you, do you know? The, um, they were able to secure a lot of reptilian limbs in uh, in 1812, they're based in Alsace-Lorraine, the border of France and Germany. This what do you thing. mean by a lot? What are you talking about? There were some kind of um, battles in the area at the time, like Knights Templar or something, with reptilians. And apparently they hacked off a lot of the reptilian limbs. So these DARPA scientists have got hold of these limbs. Uh, think and they it's... haven't decayed? No, well, they've preserved them somehow. Yeah, okay. and um, this is connected to the um, the manuscript, the uh, cuneiform manuscript. Yeah, I think that come from that time and that place. I think it's that set of um, DARPA scientists that wrote that. That that manual describes working with reptilians to rebuild the human body. Uh, if what's what do you mean by rebuild the human body? Enhance it or what, or de um, develop it into what? To enhance it, I think if they've lost body parts and they uh, the body's been seriously damaged in war, um, they're looking to replace it with cybernetics. So the team in two thousand in twenty two twelve has got the most advanced cybernetics. So if the team the, the team in eighteen twelve is passing the um, reptilian limbs to the team now in this time. They're working on it, developing cybernetic versions of those robotic limbs. So those so robotic have, limbs are for, for reptilians. So why are they building reptilian they're, parts? They're for humans. They're, attack, they're grafting them to humans. And how, how does a completely different alien biophysical body work with a human? How, how does that work? Because they're not grafting the whole arm onto the human, they're grafting the skeleton onto them, then growing human-looking flesh over the top, so you can't notice. So that mean it gives them a much stronger hit. Um, the, the 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 when they studied the limbs in uh, France in 1812, the scientists they found that the uh, they had retractable bones in the knuckles and in the forearm that could pop out. So that, okay. that explains the, the ability to send knives out from the, yeah, from the top it's of like the... A blade it's it's essentially, essentially your, your, the nails of the fingers are retracted further back into the, up into the hand. I think some of them are on the end. Some of them come out the knuckles and then others come uh, out the inside of the wrist. Yeah. So they're coming out different ways. I mean, we're talking science fiction here and a lot of Hollywood films and stuff like that. Are you saying it's based on reality in the last three or four minutes of this part? Yes, definitely, definitely. So these, the scientists who've got them in our time frame, they're working on ways to cybernize the limbs, but they, they haven't got everything perfected. So if they're not sure about something, they pass it to the team in 2212. No, actually, I'm, I'm just really wor I just don't understand how this time travel stuff can work. How do you get people through that? How does it all work? Well, we're, gonna, we're, going to, we're, we're coming a wee bit to the end of this particular part. Uh, so I think what we'll do is uh, we'll, uh, rather than get into another subject, we'll... We'll call this the end of basis twenty three part one, okay. and we'll uh, we'll reconfigure for part two, 
And what I really want to get down to is, is why you're in the army and uh, what brought you there, what you've been doing. You've been having a good time living on the US taxpayers' tax dollars. And uh, I see you got a bit of a cut lip there. You, you know, yeah. You haven't been uh, having a bit of a barroom brawl like they all do in the movies? No, no, no. Just got scratched up a bit. All oh, right. Okay, well, uh, J uh, Michael, it's good to see you. We'll just uh, reconfigure for part two and see you on the other side. Sounds good. Okay, one second. It'll be about two minutes. Okay. So do you want to carry on?